so. I am simply the end result of your experiment. What becomes of me now that your experiment is over? These humans, they care nothing for me. This cannot be my destiny. I dreamed of creating the world's strongest Pokemon, and we succeeded. Hey everybody, Bam Collectibles here, back for another statue unboxing review for you. As a kid, Mewtwo was one of the most highly sought after powerful Pokemon in the game. I will never forget seeing him in the wild, being able to catch him with my one and only Master Ball. Many years later, he continues to be that same icon of power. Taking a look at the base, this statue is themed after when Mewtwo first broke out of his canister and began to attack the humans that created him. In the back of the statue, you will see some holes that's later going to be used to attach some accessories that were sculpted separately. The statue does come with some built-in LED lights, which is awesome. Here's the controls in the back, and then the port for the power is there as well. A few of these bluish effect pieces were also sculpted separately. This base is really packing in the details department. The beautiful mixture of both the metallic, the canister, the effect pieces, some of the broken rock. It's just incredible how it all goes together. I love that nice Team Rocket symbol in the back. Good throwback. This piece here is where Mewtwo will later be mounted to via that magnet. The bottom round glass looking piece is later where the LEDs will be illuminating from. Here's a close-up of the steel rods that I mentioned were sculpted separately. On here, you will see some blue tack, and I use that. It actually comes with it, and I use it to further reinforce them staying in. They don't really slip out easily, but just in case to make sure that they don't, I'll put some in there when I insert them in the holes. With those installed, what also comes with this is one of the kind of restraint claws that was used once Mewtwo kind of began to get really frustrated and start to use his power. These tried to contain him in place and they were very unsuccessful doing so. Sculpted separately was also a broken piece of what I've been calling the canister. I guess it technically could be called a large beaker by a scientist or whatever. When you're looking at Mewtwo from the front, they sculpted his left hand separately. On the joint that connects to Mewtwo, I did have some of that blue tack as well. That helps things really stand in place. If there's any loose parts, it really fills in the gaps and gives a nice strong hold to it. The effect piece is next level. I love all the different tones and textures with the paint that they used. And then you have the large sphere as the focal point, the flames in the back, and the more electricity looking piece up front. My man right here, sculpted to perfection. The artists at DS Studio are unrivaled when it comes to creating both dynamic poses and accurate feels to these Pokemon, just like they jumped out of a TV show or video game. It was a really cool touch how they added all the different shards and broken glass sculpted onto Mewtwo's body. This small piece of blue tack will later be used to mount Mew. Another one of my favorite things about the studio is just how clean and slick their paint job is. There's never any bleed or blotches, and I always love how great the eyes look on the Pokemon. There's an L-shaped cavity in the shoulder, which allows for the arm to be inserted in the proper position. I love that the studio did go for a dynamic pose for how powerful of a Pokemon he is. Some of their other ones in the past, they had him in more static positions, while this bad boy surely breaks the mold, or should I say, the canister. <coughs> Incoming cute but dangerous Mew. I was really happy to see that Mew was included as well. Originally, I thought this was just a Mewtwo statue at first, so just an added bonus to have it included with. Look at that cute little mouth. 
The tailpiece is very thin and fragile, so be careful with that if you do purchase. There is a little bit of a notch on the side of Mew. That's where it connects to that part of Mewtwo's tail that had some blue tack in it before. Gotta whip out my PSA Mewtwo card from the original base set. Now his grade is only seven and it's a non-first edition. So he's not that expensive compared to some of the other ones that are out there. He was about 25, 30 bucks if I recall, but I love having these in my collection. As seen in some of my other Pokemon videos, I do have these little stands that the cards sit in when I have them on display. turning off the lights so you can see how the LEDs look in the dark. The statue light doesn't pulsate as you see here. This is just me adjusting my camera so that you can actually see. This is about how bright it is in the dark. The light is perfectly casted on Mewtwo and it kind of further adds to how dynamic of a feel the statue is. Kudos to DS Studio as well for using electric to illuminate the LEDs in this statue instead of something like batteries. Those can be really painful to work with. I wanted to give you a personal look at how I'll be displaying this statue in my IKEA DTOF display case. I decided to custom print a Master Ball background. You can see in the card up here how I go about that process in another one of my videos. Even though Mew is in this statue, I will be picking up this one made by MFC so that it'll have its own base and I can appreciate it all on its own. Not to mention, it'll fill this case out more so it'll feel nice and balanced. I picked this bad boy up at Favor GK. Be sure to check out their website in the description if you want to pick one up for yourself. Hey, special thanks to you for your support in this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet and you enjoy this kind of content, please be sure to. And as always, everybody, do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.